Well, I can't get the door to open, so I'll just do it the hard way, but or the easy way, I guess, really. I'll rip the windshield out with the loader and fork it out of there, but there's a copper aluminum radiator laying right here. And it's a big one, too. You just never know what you're going to find in these cars. That's why you always got to look, because sometimes there's stuff that can't be in there, and sometimes there's a bonus in there. Hello, everybody. Silas back again today. Uh, it's actually afternoon right now. It's about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't record anything this morning. I didn't record anything yesterday, and there's an airplane going over that's really loud. They're having flight classes out at the airport right now, so all week long they've had students flying airplanes around and they kind of come down, act like they're gonna land, and then they take back off again, over and over and over again. But anyway, I've just been super, super busy crushing cars. I got a lot crushed, and I had this road almost open, and then we bought a whole bunch of cars from a tow company. They've hauled a few of them in so far. There's a bunch more to go, though. Now this is a Blazer here, or what's a what's the GMC? Is it is the GMC Blazer? I don't know. Oh, Jimmy. I don't know. It's too warm. My brain's not working. <laughs> but anyway, this just came in. I might have to look that over, see if it's got anything good on it. Don't see those too often anymore. And then the rest of these are just junk. Uh, the little green Honda was here already, but this GMC is new. This, what is this, a Ford? Yeah, this Ford's new. That GMC's new. And then the minivan's new, and they're supposed to bring some more this afternoon and tomorrow. So uh, I almost had the road open. I only had three more cars to get out of the road but uh, it's filling back up again now. So basically what I've got going on today is I'm gonna go through these cars first, see if we can't find any treasure in them. I don't know, like I said, there's only four, maybe, maybe not, we'll see what's in them. Then after that, I have some exciting news. Well, kind of exciting news and kind of a whole lot of work news, but I have some news related to that building up front and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. First things first, let's check this thing out. This thing has been sitting a long time. The city right now is writing letters to people and they're impounding cars like crazy that are abandoned in people's yards. I don't really see anything good in here. But yeah, there's been bunches of vehicles like this that have been sitting in people's backyard forever for one reason or another. A lot of times what happens is, with a vehicle like this, somebody will go out to Speedy Cash or Title Max or one of those title loan companies, and they'll borrow, you know, $500 to $1,000 against it, and then the motor will blow up, the transmission will blow up, whatever, and they'll park it in their yard and they say, I ain't paying my payment on that. It doesn't run. Well, they can't sell it. The interest racks up and pretty soon they owe three or $4,000 on it. Then the title company doesn't want the vehicle back. They just want the money. So they say, we're not getting the vehicle. And then eventually at some point in time, the city writes them a letter and says, get that out of your yard. Well, they can't sell it because they don't have a title to it. So they just let it sit. And then the tow company comes and grabs it out of their yard. And then we buy it at the auction. Happens absolutely all the time. Now this in here looks like it's a little bit more recent. Whew, it is hot in here today. This is not a good day. Normally I do my treasure hunts in the morning for this exact reason. Nothing in that one. Let's go on to the next one. Now this in here, you can tell it's been sitting for quite a while. It's got all this. Let's see here. Uh, has an 08 park permit. I don't know. That could have been on there for a long time, but it looks like it's been sitting for a while. Yeah, it's been sitting for quite a while. This thing absolutely reeks of cats, and I couldn't figure it out why until I realized the back window was knocked out. So cat's been hopping in through here. So I didn't dig in it too much, didn't find anything good. And then this GMC, I can't really get to the side of it to see what's in it. It's kind of taken apart a little bit. It's an automatic. It's got the roll bar in it still. It might have a few parts on it. Like I said, we used to get these for scrap all the time, but you really don't see them that often anymore. Yeah, this one's four wheel drive, so I don't know. I'll set it aside for now and we'll figure it out later. So this just kind of strikes me funny. <laughs> see if you could spot the error in this. I'll give you a few seconds to look it over, see if you can figure out where the error is. The error is right here. Miss Spell. I don't know who Miss Spell is, but uh, evidently she's not very good at running the, uh, the vinyl machine, printing out letters because <laughs> it is misspelled. Yeah, I know in that last clip, my brakes were squeaking. They need fixed on this loader pretty bad. We can't get them to come out here and replace them. The only equipment dealer here in this area that works on equipment is a John Deere dealer, and they don't have the employees, they say, to work on other equipment, so they have gone strictly John Deere only 
So we have to have an equipment dealer from out of town come in and they told us that they'll put us on a list and when they get time, they'll send somebody out. And it's been almost two months now and they still haven't gotten time. You guys know me, I am constantly out traveling around, looking at old cars, filming really cool places. Sometimes I'm just on vacation with the family. And when I'm out traveling, I've got to be able to connect to the internet wherever I'm at. And the problem with that is, sometimes I don't have a very secure connection. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Surfshark VPN. Now you might be wondering, what is a VPN? Basically, it keeps all of your online activity private. And one of the main things that I use a VPN for is when I'm out traveling and I have to use public Wi-Fi. Now in the past, whenever I would travel and I would connect to a public Wi-Fi somewhere at a motel, at a coffee shop, wherever it might be, I was always scared that someone might steal my account, hack my accounts, something like that. But with Surfshark VPN, I'm able to browse securely, even on a public network. Another really cool feature is that when you're traveling internationally, you're able to actually change your location. I know that when I was in Costa Rica, certain things were blocked and certain things were changed from when I was in the USA. So with Surfshark VPN, I'm able to actually change my location back to the United States even though I'm in Costa Rica and everything works just as it should or I expect it to at least. You can change your location to just about anywhere in the world. You can set up a rotating IP address. I could just go on and on and on. There are so many awesome features. There's no way I could talk about them all in here. So if you're ready to browse securely and privately, click the link in the description below and use the code ADVENTURES. When you use my code ADVENTURES, you're able to get 83% off of your order, plus you get three months and an antivirus for free. Big thanks to Surfshark VPN for making this video possible. Now let's get back to browsing around the junkyard. What I have to get done is I've got this entire row of cars right here. I think there's 35 cars if I counted them correctly. They go all the way up to the building. I think I already pulled all the batteries out of them and I think I got most of the converters. Other than that, they're not ready to crush. They've got aluminum wheels. I got to drain the fluids, whole nine yards. And I really don't have time to do all that right now. So really what I need to do is get up here to the building. And then I've got a few old vehicles that I don't want to crush. I've got this old Taunus. I got this old Dodge truck. I've got a handful of old cars through here. Now, most of these are my dad's. I think the, a couple of these in here are mine. I just have to go through and see which ones are mine, but the rest of these are all my dad's. But I'm probably gonna go ahead and take most of them out to my place anyway, just to get them out of the way so I don't have to worry about tearing them up. I've got a bunch of explaining to do real quick. And if you don't like talking, then I guess you can fast forward through it. But if you really care about what goes on out here and you're interested in that type of stuff and you wanna understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, you'll definitely wanna listen to this. The reason why we are doing all that is because this building right here has to come down. I've got to clean this whole area out as well. This is all bicycles in here. I used to have these all lined up nice and neat. I used to take them out one at a time and fix them up and sell parts off of them, that sort of stuff. I made a lot of money off of bicycles back in the day, or at least I thought it was a lot of money. Back when I was 18, 19 years old, I did pretty good for myself just tinkering with bicycles, but I don't do it anymore. And this is kind of just what was left over. This is the junkest of the junk. So most of these are just going to hit the scrapyard. There is a couple old ones here that I might try to re resell, but you can kind of see the building right here where it changes color. That's where it has to be torn down. All of the gray part, this direction all has to go away. That way we can fix the roof up on the front part. I'm going to go inside and I'll explain it a little bit better. If you guys watch my videos all the time, you guys know that this room that I'm in right now, 
I just got done cleaning most of my stuff out of here. I scrapped most of it. I sold a bunch of it and I have just a tiny bit left in here. But uh, this roof leaks like crazy. As you can see, there is daylight pouring through up there. This roof is completely toast. Last December, we had 100 and I can't remember the exact speed now. I think it was 109 or 119 mile an hour winds. Sustained winds came through for an entire day almost and they just completely ripped this entire roof off and it was super leaky before that even but it just made it even worse at this point. It's a really cool old building but none of these garage doors work except for I think this one here halfway works. None of the other ones work. It doesn't have electric in it. It's concrete walls. It doesn't have heat in it. Nothing like that. So we thought you know what rather than put a bunch of money into fixing this building we're just going to tear it down and build a new one. However the city of South Hutch said no you cannot build a new one there. And you say why would you tear down such a cool big building and build a brand new one? Well when you build a new building in Reno County though you get it tax free for 10 years. That's not possible so our two options are is just go ahead and tear this building down and put a fence up in here or we can go ahead and re-roof this. So we talked to a company and rather than put tin up there they have this kind of like a rubber rollout roof and it has a 20 year leak leak proof guarantee and if it leaks anytime within 20 years they will replace the roof for free and it's a reputable company that's doing the work and so we said you know what that's a lot cheaper than putting tin up there we're going to go ahead and do that so they've got to go up there and tear off all the old tin and it's got i think four maybe five layers of roofing tar up there where they roofed it over the years over the last i don't know how old this building is i think it was built in the 40s so over the last 80 years all of the beams are still good so we're just going to leave all those up there they're just going to take all the decking up above off this building ends with this wall here and then on the other side is the part that we're going to tear down now you're saying why are you tearing it down well i'll show you you can kind of look up here there's a very very slight slope on this building where this where the roof the ceiling comes down this direction at an angle we'll go down in here into the dungeon this is where they used to keep their transmissions when we bought this place this floor was super oily but it holds water now so don't have that issue as much now it's really dark in here i don't know if you can tell but this roof slopes the opposite direction go figure why in the world would anybody make a roof that dumb and so what happens is it holds water in the middle and it doesn't shed the water like it should so really we have never used this room we used to keep our catalytic converters in here we used to have this whole area to stack with catalytic converters but we got all those out of here about seven or eight years ago we got nervous about people stealing them breaking in and stealing stuff so we got rid of those and that's when we started storing them elsewhere we do still have a bunch of aluminum wheels in here, but those are just scrap. I wish we could have got them out when prices were up, but we didn't. That's okay. A bunch more copper aluminum radiators. We'll find a place for all that stuff. Got a whole bunch of bicycles in here. I'm just going to scrap probably 90% of these. Kind of a cool story on these bikes over here, this style. They have this style of handlebars, and then especially like this one right here, this old Volk cycle. I had a guy from Mexico that would come in and buy those from me, and he could fit tons of these things in a minivan, and he would be pulling a minivan behind a minivan, and he'd pack them both full of bicycles. He gave me $15 a piece for these bikes in this condition here, as long as they were complete. And then he would take them down to Mexico, they would rebuild them and resell them. But because of all the violence on the border, he quit doing that because he would carry huge wads of cash with him to buy stuff and he didn't feel safe doing that, so he just quit. And then we've got one car in here. This is a 67 Thunderbird with a 428 in it. It's a pretty cool car, but it's been leaked on for so long now that I don't know if it's any, any good anymore, but really it's not too bad a condition still. I'm sure the interior is shot at this point, but the body is still pretty solid. The floors are probably kind of rusty now, but that's all fixable stuff. So we got to get it out of here. And then upstairs used to be clear full of parts. This is like a parts warehouse for them, like I said earlier. And a number of years ago, my brother-in-law was here and he helped me clean all those out. And we scrapped all those a long time ago. So really, I don't think it'll take that much work to clean this building out. Then we just have to have them come in here and tear it down. The problem is, is we have to have room for them to get in here to tear it down. And that's why I have to get rid of all the cars that are around the building. As you can see, the building I'm in right now is much higher than the rest of the yard. That's about ground level down there. And now I'm up here. So this building never floods other than what comes through the roof. So it's really not a bad building. It just, we really would prefer to have a new one, but it is what it is. To fix just the roof on this building here, we're looking at spending somewhere in the neighborhood of around twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars to fix this roof, and there's one more tall roof in this little room over here, right beside it, where my old Dodge truck is. Which is kind of a bummer for me because I just did all that work to get all my stuff out of that big room, and now we're gonna fix that room, and all my stuff is in rooms that still leak. But I guess that's okay. Right now, I have a guy building shelves inside of a U-Haul truck for me, and I think this room that I'm in right now, I should be able to get pretty well everything out of this room into that U-Haul truck if I organize it as I put it in. We're gonna worry about those another day. What I really wanna focus on 
for today and probably tomorrow is getting all these cars out of here get them out of the way that way i can just bring my truck and trailer in here and do nothing but haul old cars from here out to my place but i've got a couple of customers here now so i've got to go out and take care of them so i'll do that and then we'll come in here and start working on these cars Well, I'm making progress. So far I've found three converters. Of course, two of them were on that Ranger, and then there was one other car that had one converter on it that I missed. Well, I tried recording more, but it's just that sun out there is cooking hot, and every time I put my camera out there, I hit record, and by the time I get back in the loader and start doing anything, my camera's done shut off. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and close it down for now. I'll just come back early in the morning, get started again, and then I'll be able to actually record what I'm doing. And good morning. I forgot this guy here wanted to bring this old truck out today, and that's why I'm not at the yard. It's kind of a shame. This truck's in really good condition. It's just a super ugly international. That's the way it goes, though, is the nice ones are always ugly. It's even got a clean and clear title to it in the whole nine yards. It was parked in the barn most of its life. Kind of a shame. But I have never been able to find a market for these things. I have tried. I've had some really nice ones of these. And there's just no value to them. Even for wall art, these noses are really hard to sell. They do sell, but you have to sell them fairly cheap. But it does have a big copper radiator in it. Great big copper radiator. And I bought it for a little over scrap price. So I don't have much extra invested in it. There we go. I'm not sure what engine's in it. It could be one of the good engines. Some of these engines are pretty good because they like to put them in the old Scouts. And travel alls and stuff like that. But uh, I'll have to look and see. There's a little pad on the other side of the engine that says the engine size. But... I don't feel like getting greasy this early in the morning, so we're just going to worry about that another day. And welcome to the collection. And I'm here at the yard. They dropped off a couple more cars. Don't know if there's anything in these or not. This in here, busted window, you can tell it's been sitting a while. So these must be all abandoned cars that they're getting in right now. Where people didn't get them out of the yard. This in here looks a little bit fresher. I guess we'll see if there's anything in it. That's crazy. This car is actually really clean inside. I mean, it's kind of tore up, but it's not dirty. It looks like they even vacuumed the carpets fairly recently, at least. There's a fancy radio. Life is tough, but so are you. But not tough enough, because you're going to go flat in the crusher. I have no clue what happened back there, but that seat got ripped up bad. I tell you what, it's a bad week for Mazda Tributes. He's unloading one now. This is one, and that's one. <laughs> I guess the last one of the batch is this one here. And I'm honestly, I'm kind of kind of disappointed in this batch of cars. I haven't found anything good, not even one penny. The only thing halfway good is this Jimmy here. I take that back. This in here's got a whole bunch of money in it. Of course, it's the hardest to get into one. I can barely get this door open. And that door over there is up against that Jeep. So I told him to pack them in here, so he packed them in here. But uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of money all over the floor. So I'm going to go through here and gather all this up, and I'll let you know how much I find. I found a dollar and 11 cents. I found a pair of pliers and a screwdriver. But check this out in the door. This is pretty exciting. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of see it down in there. I haven't gotten it out yet. Let's see what it is. There was a quarter in the door, so while I was getting that out, I saw this. I don't know, I can't tell. I can't tell if that's real or not. Give me just a second. Okay, I got out of that hot van, came over here in the shade. Let's see here. I don't know if there's any writing on this or not. I almost don't think it's real just by looking at it, but I can't quite tell. I have seen some low quality stuff that was real. It just wasn't very good, good quality. Don't see any markings on the ring. Gotta check the clasp. No, I don't see any markings at all, so I don't think it's even gold filled. I think it's just 100% fake. Fake jewelry. I don't know. I can't quite tell what that is. It's way too small to, or too big to be a bracelet, but it kind of seems too small to be a necklace, unless it's like a 
really tight necklace on somebody with a small neck. <laughs> Which I, I'm guessing that's what it is. That's kind of unfortunate that it's not real, but still, it's not very often I find a gold chain in a car. One time, I found several gold chains at least this big, if probably bigger, honestly. They were probably bigger than that. There were several of them in a vehicle, and they were all 14 karat gold. That was pretty cool. That was years and years and years ago, though. I think I scrapped them all back when gold was like $700 an ounce, <laughs> if I don't only kept them. But I'll take it home, put my glasses on, look over it again, make sure it's not real before I throw it away. But uh, that'd be really cool if I could find something like that that was real. I have found silver on camera with you guys since I've started filming before, but I've never found actual gold in a car yet. Oh man, somebody show enough got the cats off this show already. That's a bummer too, cause show cats are always high dollar. Oh well, uh, can't win them all. I bought it for scrap price. I think I paid $200 for this car, so <laughs> it'll scrap for more than that anyway, even without the cats. It all works out though. This one here has three converters on it. Two of them are pretty high dollar. Of course, it's the hard to get off ones on the manifolds. And then there's one underneath it that's worth a little bit of money, not a whole lot. But we'll worry about this when I get back. Right now, it is lunchtime. And then after that, I've got a guy bringing another antique truck out. So I gotta go out to my place again. So I'm sitting here eating my lunch, reading the news, and I see this. That's pretty crazy. I've never found anything like that before. I didn't get to record unloading this truck, but here it is. Pretty cool truck. Old GMC 58 or 59, I'm not sure on the exact year. Had a 370 in it, that's why the guy bought the truck was for the motor. He pulled the motor out, doesn't need the rest of it. It's a little on the rough side. It's got some rust in it, got a bunch of Bondo in it. There's the radiator laying in the seat. But you just don't see GMCs too often. I get a lot of Chevys this year, here lately especially. But this is the first GMC I've had in quite a while. It's got a little bit of rust up there, but I don't know that the cab is gonna be worth anything. For once, I may not chop this nose. I know I chop a lot of these big truck noses just because they don't usually have value, but like I said, you just don't see GMC noses very often. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the cab is the same as a Chevy, just the dash is a little bit different. So if somebody had a Chevy and they really like the look of the GMC nose, they could swap it out to this. But right now, I need to get back to the yard and keep getting busy. Well, we are making progress. I think I got about half of them out of here today. I think there's 12 more junkers left in here. Yeah, 12 more junkers I gotta get out of here, so not bad. This just came in for scrap. Let's see. Hop in here real quick. Keys in it? Yeah, keys in it. You hear that knocking noise when I first started it? It's just an old worn out car. The interior is all ragged out, dash is taken apart. Not worth fixing, not worth selling. The road's getting pretty full. Just got this little gray Malibu and whatever that thing is in front of it. Is that seriously another tribute? That's the Ford version of the same thing, so that's four of those. <laughs> that's crazy. Bad day for those, they are just junk when they were new anyway. Yeah, anyway, this road is getting pretty full. All the ones that I have ready, completely ready, I've been stacking up. I still have to pull the aluminum wheels off and drain the fluids, but other than that, they're ready to go. I can squeeze back here. This came in. I don't normally take campers, and I didn't know they were bringing this. This came from the impound, and he's like, we just want to get it out of here. So he got it out of there, and he dumped it on us. So now i got to figure out what in the world we're going to do with it. It's pretty rough. I'm going to try to just flip it and hopefully get a little bit out of it so I don't have to haul it to the landfill. 
I was just about to head out for the day and then some of those shady converter buyers that drive around in the white vans, they pulled in wanting to buy some of the converters I had pulled off today and they were offering dirt cheap prices, less than I would pay for the stuff, but they kept saying, oh, we pay cash, we pay cash. And I said, nah, I said, nah. I said, do you require titles or proof of ownership? Oh, no, 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 none of that. We just, we pay cash, no questions asked. So anytime you're wondering where your stolen cats went, that's where they went. Well, with that, I am done for the day. If you guys enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up on this video. And as always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.